guys welcome back to another episode of atlas survival shelters now this video is very important to you guys they're going to buy a bunker why because i'm going to tell you what makes my bunker so incredibly great when you are done watching this video you will decide what type of shelter is best for you based on your your soil and your high water and your water table now this is a video i've been needing to make I get asked a lot of questions when I'm selling bunkers. What's the difference between a round shelter, a square shelter? What's better for this? What's better for that? So this video is going to be about the pros and cons of the different types of shelters. Now at Atlas Survival Shelters, we actually can give you a non-biased opinion because we make all types of shelters. We make shelters that are built into the house. We make culvert shelters. We make square modular shelters. We make watertight shelters. We make shelters that are made out of multi-plate that the military uses, like in missile silos. And we also do domes that can be used as a home. So why are there so many shelters? And why are there so many types? Well, different shelters are good for different things. Sometimes the type of the soil will determine the type of the shelter that you put in. For instance, you do not want to put in a culvert shelter in Houston, Texas. Why? because of the high water table. A culvert shelter is not classified as a watertight shelter. Therefore, what type of shelters could you put in a place like Houston, Texas, or even let's say Florida or Louisiana? You would put in a watertight shelter, either round or square. So what's the difference between the round or the square when you're dealing with a watertight shelter? Well, first of all, you have a smooth skin inside wall. The corrugated is, 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 is corrugated. It's like, you know, like this, up and down, up and down, up and down. So there's no echo inside the corrugated pipe, where the shelters that have smooth skin have an echo inside them, like right here. Listen to this. And one that I really don't like, and it's called an echo. I just don't like the echoes in the shelters. Well, see what I mean? I hate echoes. See, there's an echo when you get in certain types of shelters. This is why I'm always saying to people, if you have a choice and you can put in a culvert shelter, you want to put it in. Why? One, it has a massive amount of under the floor storage. Two, there's no echo inside there. You hear that? solid as concrete and there's no echo in here because corrugated pipe does not echo three it is galvanized it's not going to rust where the watertight shelters whether round or square are going to have to be coated they're going to have to be sandblasted and coated to do it properly which we do we sandblast and we coat them so there's so many advantages to a culvert shelter over a non-culvert shelter and the price is even lower on the culvert shelters. But when we do a shelter at a high water table, we have to eliminate the culvert. There's only two weaknesses to a culvert. One, the material is rather flimsy, as you notice. It's very flimsy, but it is the strongest once it's buried underground. You can go up to 42 feet underground with a culvert shelter. The key is to pack the earth every 12 inches as you go up around it. If you just put in culvert and you just dump the rock on top of it or dump a bunch of dirt, you know what's gonna to happen to that culvert, guys? It is going to, it's gonna misshape, it's gonna crush, it's gonna do all kinds of things. So when you're putting in a culvert, you gotta do it right. Now, have I ever had anybody put them in wrong? Yes, I've had a couple of people who have bought culvert shelters from me and they put them in a high water table, not knowing they're going into a high water table, so they added a sump pump right next to it. You put in a 12 inch pipe with a sump pump and it will pull the water out. But if the sump pump burns out, the water can go into the shelter. And unfortunately, they had one flood up in the hills. So just because you're up in the hills doesn't mean you can not hit a spring or whatever up in the hills. So you gotta make sure that you're not in a high water table. The other thing is you always gotta make sure that you pack earth around the shelter. Now, rock will not pack and sand will not pack. So if you're in a sandy loam soil, what you have to do is you have to form up around the culvert pipe and you have to pour concrete underneath it. And then it has a saddle that it's sitting in and it will stay very, very strong. 
okay, and it won't just shake. Kind of like this bunker here. You see how I'm walking through this bunker and it's perfectly round? That's because they put a concrete saddle underneath it and it kept its shape. So guys, that's the only thing that can happen to the culvert. High water table, or if you don't put it in right, it can disform or even crush. But if you put it in right, you will absolutely love the bunker as I have in my bunker and I absolutely love it. So let's talk about the way I make my shelters. So the first thing the Atlas shelters always have is a bulletproof patch on the surface. Okay, now in a fair comparison to this, let's call them competitors, are not doing the same thing. What they are using, as you can see in this image here, this is basically a sheet metal roofing hatch. And look at the hinges here on the sides. You could just, the hinges are right there and the only thing keeping this hatch locked is a padlock. You could easily shoot right through this hatch. Matter of fact, when we jump up and down on it, like in this image here, you can see it's just spring, it says sheet metal, guys. So our bunker, as you watch it open here, is lifted by a hydraulic jack. Now, it is made out of 3 8 AR-500 bulletproof steel. This is the same material that you use for targets. So you can shoot it over and over and over again, and it doesn't ding it, it doesn't go through it, it doesn't do anything to it. That is how I'm making the entrance to your shelter. I don't want people getting in your bunker, unlike some other people who just put regular roofing hatches up there. Next thing, I want to show you a comparison between my hinges and their hinges. Look at their hinges. Both of these competitors, exposed to the outside, rusted, exposed to the outside and rusted. No concrete or nothing protecting them. And this thing's a year old, the shelter's flooded and everything's rusted on it. Now look at my hinges here. So that hatch is, uh, that's an armor plated hatch. It's uh, about eight years old. It's got an automotive paint finish on it, so it doesn't have one speck of rust on it. Look at that paint. I mean, it's in perfect shape. And after you put your, the hinges are gonna be buried in concrete, and the hinges are encased in this box right here, so you can't access the, hin the hinges and cut it out. They're encased into a metal box, and then they're surrounded with 12 inches of concrete. That enough right there should have you convinced who is gonna make you the better bunker. But I'm not even done yet. So the next thing, so once you open up the hatch to the bunker, you should walk down in the shelter. Now, to do it correctly, you should walk down into the bunker, and at the bottom of the stairs, you should have to make a left-hand or a right-hand turn. That's called a 90-degree turn or an L turn, like the letter L, 90 degrees. All my shelters do this, with the exception of some models that aren't classified, like the Bombnado or the wine NATO, okay? Those shelters are designed to be safe rooms, gun rooms, wine cellars, and other things. But all my fallout shelters have a 90 degree turn. The other people are not doing this. This is what they do. This is, look at this image right here. A bunker made by Rising S. They're a bunker building company in Texas. Um, they were on Doomsday Preppers. They sell and install these types of bunkers all over the country. So I'm coming down in, I'm gonna, coming down in the hatch. The hatch can be disguised in a lot of different ways, buildings on top and all sorts of things. Um, so we're coming into living quarters. It's just a straight staircase going down into the bunker. Now what that does by not having a 90 degree turn at the bottom of the staircase, it allows radiation to come right into the bunker. And what makes radiation lethal is lethal is the amount of rimkins that you get into your body or what's called rims now by having a 90 degree turn it deflects it and attenuates the radiation by putting it straight in like this it allows it right into the shelter so it's not much better than being outside we're filming a tv episode in here so you got this uh door right here, which is leads to the generator room. Then you've got to go through this gas tight door here into the decontamination room. It's got a shower and a second door, and then you're into this bunker. The other thing is, 
the shelter that has a straight in staircase is really just a tornado shelter. So by taking a tornado shelter and putting an air system in it doesn't make it a bomb shelter. It just makes it a tornado shelter with an air system in it to make you a properly engineered fallout shelter as we do at Atlas you got to have that 90 degree turn and you have to travel a certain distance as well it's not just a 90 degree turn and you're done you need to travel two times the distance the width of the entrance so if the entrance going down is three feet wide you need to travel a minimum of six feet to the door from the corner of the turn so what we do is we go seven feet we always go more than what you need so we have a 10 foot room here Stairs coming down three feet wide and then seven feet to the door. Now, before you get to the door, we have two doors. You have to go through one door, close it behind you, and now you're into an airlock or a decontamination room. This is how we make our shelters at Atlas. As you're looking at this image right here, you see how you go through one door, you're into the other. This area right here is where you would decontaminate. So this is how we are doing our shelters at Atlas. I don't know why the other people aren't doing this. I know of one competitor that does it this way and does it right. There is a couple other people that are okay that do it right, but they do different types of shelters, but they're doing it right. But for the most part, our competition, our primary competition doesn't do it right. They're still using tornado shelter technology and calling it a fallout shelter. So I feel sorry for you people that have bought one of these shelters and you're like, oh wow, now I'm learning about all this stuff. Yeah, I would feel bad about it too. It's not right. Okay, the other thing, the depth of the shelter. Now you will notice that Atlas shelters are always buried between six and 10 feet deep, where the other people are buried in between three and four feet deep. Well, that's about, I don't know, 14 gauge steel. All I know is that's not going to stop a bullet or keep anybody out. Now, three foot of earth is enough soil on top of you to protect you from the gamma radiation. There's nothing wrong with that. But guess where the cold earth and warm earth is at, or actually the, the basically where the earth stays the same temperature. It's down there below six feet. And sometimes it's even further up north because it can freeze down as far as 12 feet in places like Minnesota and Wisconsin. So the Atlas Culvert Shelter, which is my best selling shelter, is because it can go so deep. It can go up to 42 foot deep, but typically we put it 10 feet underground. So when you go into the shelter, even in the middle of the summer, and it's 100 degrees, it's 60 degrees in the bunker. And when you go into the bunker in the middle of the winter and it's 40 below, guess what? It's 56 degrees on the bunker, okay? So by being so deep, it keeps the shelter climate nice and, and steady down there. So that brings up a question. These other people who are doing shelters. Well, one of them is putting in their own homemade air system, like this image right here. I'm gonna show you a picture of a homemade. They make it themselves, but I call it a homemade air system. It has no manual crank. It has no way to operate it, except if you added a bellow, like this image here, you could put a bellow, but you could sit there and you'd have to sit there and do this to stay alive and your arm would just wear out. It's, it's impossible. Unless you can manually crank, like this video here, showing these different people. Look how easy it is for these people to crank this air system. And you just take this handle right here, you just hook it on there, and if you want, you can tighten down the screw so the handle doesn't come off. Yeah. It's easy. Oh yeah, it almost makes itself go, for sure. Yeah, so this is the easiest air system in the world to operate. That's why I use it in all my bunkers because you don't know when a six-year-old is going to have to do it. Exactly. So you see how easy it is for everyone to operate this air system? Guys, my air system is expensive for a reason. It's military grade, it's made in Switzerland, but it has a manual override crank. And when the air system's running, listen to this. You can hear how quiet it is and, oh yeah, it's blowing. But uh, that's all the noise the air system makes. You hear how quiet that is? Do you know how loud that other air system is? Turn this baby on. Oh yeah, okay, so you got power vents here. Turn on your vacuum. It is loud, it's horribly loud. You will never find a video of it operating because they don't want you to hear how loud it is. It's horrible. So the amount of decibels it's putting out is just deafening. So there's a big difference in shelters, just in the air systems. Their air system has six pounds, or five and a half to six pounds of carbon in it. That is the, the material that filters out the radiation. My air filter has 60 pounds of carbon, 10 times as much, 10 times as much. My air pipe 
is six inches in diameter and it's made of steel. Their air pipe is made of four inches in diameter and it's made of PVC plastic. The air pipes is just two PVC pipes that you can just push over and break. So they wouldn't handle a moose, much less a nuclear blast. And then there's two air pipes. This is one air pipe. That's a six inch galvanized air pipe, so it's never gonna rust. And then there's the other air pipe right there. So I'm gonna show you some images and footage here. This is how my air system works. Now you notice it comes up out of the bunker, it shoots out to the right, or shoots out to the left here, and it goes about 20 feet, and then it has a pipe that goes up, and at the bottom of that pipe is a check valve that will let condensation out of the air pipe. Now the reason I do this is several reasons. One, when you bring hot air into a bunker that's been cool, if you bring it straight in, like the other guys, matter of fact, this is all they do. Their overpressure blast valve is on the roof and sticking straight up out of the bunker, just coming up through the earth and sticking up above the ground is a four inch white PVC plastic pipe with a 90 degree turn on it. All you have to do to get to that bunker is walk up and twist off that 90 degree and you can look right down inside the bunker. You can pour in gasoline, you can pour in water. That is all this protect you. I don't understand why people are being fooled and buying a bunker like that. That is horrible engineering. My air system, you can come up to the pipe, which is galvanized, by the way, six inch steel, hot dip galvanized, so it won't ever rust. You can't burn it, you can't break it. You're not gonna do nothing to it. Even if you could get water into it, it's just gonna go straight into the ground. And then, so the, this is the way it operates. The air comes through the pipe, it goes uphill to the bunker and we get the pipe below six feet below the surface because that will make the air as it comes in. It's like the coil in an air conditioner. As the air comes in, it will, it will actually cool it down in the summer and it will actually warm it up in the winter, depending on where you're at and what time of year is. But you gotta have a coil system. So the air goes through my air system, then it goes to the bunker. Any condensation that's been built up rolls back downhill and goes out through the check valve. This is a military grade air system, guys. I would never, ever accept a shelter the way other people are making it. It is not good. You guys always complain about, oh, you could just do this, you could do that. How would you like to have a shelter from the other people made of four inch plastic PVC that you can open it up and basically look down inside the bunker? Is that what you really want? If so, buy a bunker from these people. But if you want a good bunker, I have done everything I can to engineer a bunker that is as tamper proof and safe as possible. Another thing about my air system, my air system, you can add an air conditioner to it or you can add a heater to it. You can't do that with this homemade air system these people are doing. All it do is sucking in some air. Oh yeah, okay, so you got power vents here. Just pulling in air and blowing in there. They're not taking consideration it's 105 degrees outside and you're making the shelter 105 degrees inside or it's 40 below zero outside and they're pulling in there it's 20 below zero and freezing inside it's horrible engineering i was smart enough to listen to engineers that have been doing this for 30 years and take their advice and i let them work with me on designing my bunker using their technology and things i came up with to create the atlas survival shelter i have today and guys yes my bunker is patented okay if you want this secure patented engineering you want to get it from atlas now, other people have tried to copy it and I've had to stop it, okay? And you're like, well, why don't you give up? Why are you telling this the secrets of how to do it right and expect them uh, to not do it right? Well, I have patents on my systems and some of, not everything's patented, but the basic design is patented, okay? Now, if people want to do it right, then it's apples to apples. But right now, guys, it is apples to oranges. There's no way in a million years I would want a shelter that does this. The hatch opens up. You walk down into the shelter. There's water in the bottom of the shelter because it's set too low, too low to the ground. There's water in there. You're going through a door. Okay, look at this door. This door is just like a residential door, but they make it themselves and they say it's bulletproof. Well, that doesn't matter. You need a gas tight door. Okay, who cares about a bulletproof door? The hat should have been bulletproof. Why is the door bulletproof? But the door's not airtight. It just has some uh, 
just has some insulation around there or some weather stripping around the edge of it. Look at the door I'm putting on my bunkers here. This is a gas type marine grade door, something like you would see in a ship or a submarine. Why is it gas tight, guys? Well, hello, what about fires? Fires create carbon monoxide, they create gases, they create smoke, everything that will kill you. Why would you want to not have a gas tight door? Also, you got plastic air pipes, they're gonna melt. They're gonna melt in a fire or a cow's gonna kick them over and break them. With steel, it's not gonna burn us, nothing's gonna happen to it. Also, what if there's a tornado? You don't want your shelter to be pipes blown over from a tornado. I mean, it's just wrong in my opinion, okay? So, I'm doing everything to make it right. Another thing, storage in a bunker. I actually will make a modular shelter with storage underneath it. Now look at this image here. This is a shelter without storage. This is our Garnado without storage. And here's our Garnado with storage. Guys, if you're gonna have a shelter, you gotta have supplies. You gotta have water and food and electronics and backup and all this stuff. So if you have a modular square bunker and you don't have storage, you're gonna like live in my cache room right here like I am. There's crap everywhere. Water barrels, stuff. I mean, this is what it would be like in your bunker. So when you have the storage in there, everything's under the floor and it's so nice it stays so nice and clean that you just want to almost live in there full time so guys i'm making the best bunker that money can buy don't be fooled by competitors who don't do it right that's all i can say i would give a big f as far as failure goes for the engineering and design of these bunkers that these other people are making okay Somebody had to finally call these people out. Now, I'm going to say something. I'm not saying the names of these people. They know who they are. But guys, look at the people's website. Just because somebody has a fancy website and does pay-per-click and is always at the top of the page, that means they're good at marketing. doesn't make them good at making bunkers. Look what Wise Food just went through. Okay, so all those millions of dollars food got sued for a class action lawsuit. So, guys... The best marketers are sometimes some tricky people. So be careful you do business with, okay? I have pictures, I have videos. You guys follow me on YouTube, I'm doing it right. I have no problem giving you ex uh, advice and engineering advice so you can do it yourself if you wanna do it yourself. If you're in another country, I can send you the parts, you can do it yourself there, or we can make a shelter here, ship it there, or we can send the parts there, go there, get the material and build the shelter on site. So we will work worldwide. Okay, but the things that makes Atlas great is the bulletproof entrance, the 90 degrees turn in the staircase, the depth of the soil. Would you rather be 10 feet underground or three feet underground? Think about it, guys. Don't you think deeper is better? Of course it is. The air systems that we have, the air pipes, the hot dip galvanizing, the storage. Guys, if there's anything I can do to make your bunker better, I'm already doing it okay i am a perfectionist that's how i am so guys i just wanted to cover this stuff on this video i hope you enjoyed it like i said this video is for you guys who are looking at buying a bunker and you're trying to decide between apples and oranges guys i'm the apple i hope you enjoyed this video as always thanks for watching my video see you on the next one